welcome back to the channel and for more dune the board game content as promised i'm bringing now all the expansions for this game and starting with the expansion for ixians and tleilaxu um so this is the the cover of the game the, the expansion box but uh, in order to fill everything inside the base game box i just got rid of the box and i i kept the the this part of the box as well as on the other side i've kept the back where we can still see what the expansion brings uh, so it adds the two houses the ixians and the tleilaxu that about the tleilaxu led by a small council of tleilaxu masters the fanatic xenophobic tle tleilaxu were toler tolerated because of their useful genetic engineering superiority although there's underestimating underestimated sorry and loaded by others they hope to someday dominate all so now this expansion brings this faction which was already present somehow in the base game every time someone died they went to the tleilaxu tanks so there was a reference to tleilaxu but now they come full force and then these new guys the ixians the cyborg prince rombur of aus vernilius leads the ixians masters of manufacturing and technologies only they know how to deploy. Both the Ixians and the Tleilaxu are integ integral to the economy of Chon and the Imperium. The royal family of Ix, Ixian, planet Ix, had once been one of the wealthiest in the Imperium. Because of a successful invasion of Ix by the Tleilaxu and the Emperor Sardaukars, and then after many years of the liberation of Ix by Ixian and Treaty's forces, the Ixian and the Tleilaxu are mortal enemies. Wow, I didn't remember that. But now that I read this, I know there was there is one of the books in the prequels where Vernelius is friends of Leto Atreides, I'm not or Paul. They, they they were well connected, and then some tragedy happens, which seems to be the attack at the planet X. I don't remember the details, but this is canon indeed. Okay, and so the box will contain rulebook, play sheets, cards, tokens, and let's see what is inside Ixian and Tleilaxu. So here's the manual. Okay. Again, the the manual has a bit of lore if you want to go deeper into this. Uh, so I, I won't read again because it's repeating a bit, little bit what's behind uh, on the box. Uh, but the leader will be Prince. Rombo Vernius, I guess, because of Prince, he is, um, he, he, and he has the scars. I, I guess he, he got scarred from the attack. And also, Dominic Vernius was the father, apparently. Cater Pilru, Tessia Vernius, the mother or the sister. Kalia Vernius, mother or another sister, and Kamar Pilru. So the Pilrus were, I don't know, I don't know who they are. And then the Tleilaxo. There's a little bit more here. Their master console controls Axe, Axe, what the hell is this word? Axe, Lottle, Tanks, who used to regenerate lost individuals and leaders as gaulas for the other factions and to secretly create and infiltrate other factions with the face, the deadly face dancers. Uh, so maybe this is going to be represented here. So the master console, they look like aliens. Um, and then Zoal which as a, acts as a power, we'll need to see what that means. Idar Fen Ajidika, this is a famous one, Master Zav, Weak, and Blin. Okay. Then there, there are some tech tokens here. Controlling the tech tokens will be a new mechanic, uh, which I need to read then. Mm -hmm. Then the factions, I, I will see the powers on the character sheets because it, it's better to read. Then some changes on the advanced games. The Ixians, we'll see the, the faction and then the questions and that's it. Okay, so here are the tokens that we've seen, right? They have the technology tokens. Is this a technology token? No, it seems to be just a blank token here. Um, seems like the expansion only brings the tokens for the technology token for the axolot tranks. Okay. And I see, not sure if this is just blank or not. When I put those into the bags, once I read better, I will understand. 
and I'm going to separate here some other tokens, which is more technology, the spice production token, and the highliners. Okay, oh, now there are only these three, you can see. We don't know what they are until we turn. turn. Uh, there's also here this thing, which is Axel Angle. Mobile, no, it's a mobile stronghold. Mobile stronghold, okay. Okay, let's see if it makes sense if we take a look at the screens. So the screens only have a small summary of the technology and the, strat the strategy that you need to apply for these two factions. And I prefer to see them individually. Here are the cards. We'll take a look at them as well. So let's see the Ixians. They start with six forces. Three of them are cyborgs. Three, three of them are suboids. As I can see that you have this version here. Oh, there it is, the cyborgs and the suboids here. Yeah. And then... <laughs> That's why they are the masses of technology, right? They are the cyborgs. And, oh, they start in the hidden mobile stronghold. Remaining forces are off planets. So the hidden mobile is something that we need to understand. Start with lots of spies, and they have one free revival which could be either of the, those, those troops. At the start of the game, before the treasury cards are dealt, so by the way, this is not a how to play video, right? If you're interested in knowing how to play more, a little bit more of this game, then I recommend check the channel. There is the video for the base game and I go deep into how the game works. So you'll find that video in the channel. So at the start of the game, before the treachery cards are dealt, draw one card for each faction in the game. Choose one to keep, shuffle the remaining cards and deal one to each other players. Okay, so you get the cards first and one for each faction, which is more than you normally get, which is just four. Could be more than what if you're playing with six. Then on the bidding, before the bidding phase, you draw one more treasury card, then the number for bidding which is the number of players available for bidding. And then what happens here? Look to all of them, put one card of your choice face down, either on top or bottom of the deck, then shuffle the remaining cards and place them face down for the bidding round. Okay. So you can play around with the bidding because you draw one more, then you look at them and then you put one card from your choice face down either on top or bottom of the deck and shuffle the remaining so you, you you can manipulate the items that will be given for bidding especially if you know that in your alliance there's no money or uh, people will need certain items you can you can then um, manipulate in that direction what about the cyborgs and the suboids? Your seven cyborg forces are each worth two normal forces in battle, and they are able to move two territories instead of just one, and they can carry three of spice. Your cyborg forces ship, ship normally, but cost three spice to revive. Okay, so the cyborgs stronger but, but expensive. Then your 13 suboid forces ship normally, but they are worth half in battle. When dialing half or suboid, use the, the hash marks between the, the wheels, okay? Suboid, so the suboids are the crappy. The, the other ones are very strong, the suboids are very weak. Suboids can also be used to absorb losses after a battle. Okay, after a battle, losses are calculated. Any of your surviving suboid forces in the territory can be exchanged for cyborgs you lost in that battle. Suboids can also be used to maintain a presence in a territory for controlling a storm stronghold or for collecting and carrying spies normally suboids move two if accompanied by at least one cyborg or one if they are not okay then on the advanced side there is the hidden mobile stronghold after the first star movement at the start of the game you place your hidden mobile stronghold by pointing it at the sector in any non-stronghold territory this stronghold counts towards the game win and it's protected from worms and storms. Subsequently, before the storm is dialed, as long as your forces occupy it, you may move your hidden mobile stronghold up to three territories pointing at the sector in any non-stronghold territory. 
when you move in from or through a sector containing spice you may immediately collect two spice okay so he has a mobile base no other faction may ship forces directly into the hidden mobile stronghold or move if they take control other factions must move or ship forces into their ter the territory it is pointing at other factions must move or ship forces into the territory it is pointing at including the polar sink and then use one movement to enter to enter mm, no other faction may ship forces directly to your hidden mobile or move if they make if they take control other factions must move or ship forces into the territories why other factions must move or ship forces into the territory it is pointing at i don't understand this one I need to see it better. After an ally purchases a treachery card during binding, bidding, they may immediately discard it and draw the top card of your deck. That's cool. That's cool because you will get you pay for in the bidding phase. You pay for blind cards. You play, you pay blindly. You don't know what the cards are. So if you get the crappy cards, you can discard and draw a new one. At least the new one would be would be better. At least. And then there is also the alliance. The alliance, why is the alliance only on the advantage? Oh, the advantage, the, the advance, this is advantages, not advanced mode. The advanced mode is just this technology. Once during the bidding round, before bidding begins on a card and before a treaty gets to look at the cards, you may take the treachery card about to be bid on, replacing it with one from your hands. Okay, so you once, once, you can do that once. Uh, and then the suboid strength. Suboids are always considered off strength for dialing. You can't increase the effectiveness of suboids in battle by spending spice, so you cannot make them stronger. And uh, they are really crappy, 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 crappy. Okay. Mm, I'm curious about these things. There's no reference for them, so maybe it's just a base game thing. Um, it's not related to the factions, the tech tokens. The tech tokens is a, an added thing that I need to see. Assign. Okay. Maybe it's just a modular addition. What about then the Tleilaxu? 20 forces in reserve, all of them off planet. Wow. And then they start with 5 spies and they can revive 2 forces. Um, mm -hmm. So, you have superior genetic engineering technology, the face dancers. At the start of the game, you are not dealt traitor cards. After traitors have been selected and a new traitor card return to the deck, you shuffle the deck and you take the top three cards. These are your face dancers. <laughs> okay, this is promising. When another faction wins a battle, you may reveal their leader to be a face dancer and then the following occurs. The battle still counts as a win for the player. They keep, the, the, they keep or discard treasury cards, place tokens, and kill leaders in the Tleilax. So everything happens as supposed to, right? Claim tech token if appropriate, etc. Then the face dancer leader is sent to the Tleilaxu tanks if it was not already killed, but no spice is collected for it. The remaining forces in the territory go back to their reserves and, and are replaced up to the total of those forces with your Tleilaxu forces from your reserves and from anywhere on the planet. Once revealed, you do not replace a face dancer, traitor card, until you have revealed all three. Uh, when this has happened, place all the three traitor uh, cards in the traitor decks and then shuffle and draw three new face dancer. Oh, this is chaotic. These guys will always be um, present with this face dancer. During the mental pause, if there is one unrevealed face dancer you wish to replace, you may discard that face dancer, shuffle it, and and draw a new face dancer. Okay, so in the end of the round, if you don't like the face dancer that you have, you can discard and get a new one. Okay, so there is no direct way for for you to... Uh, uh, um, no, you can always bring from off off planet right mm -mm 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 -mm. 
Space collect the remaining forces in the territory, go back to their reserves, and they are replaced up to a total of those forces which are. So you, you just take the opponent out and you put your own forces. But there's nothing here saying that you cannot also bring forces from outside. Although you start with zero on the planet, everything is off planet, you can still pay to bring some troops from the reserves, right? So, wow, this is this is an invasion of clones. It's the, the clone war, the clone war. Then on the revival, if you have no revival, you have no revival limits and make payments to the Spice Bank at half the price. Other factions make revival payments to you as expected, right? So bidding, you pay to the Emperor, by shipments, you pay to the Spacing Guild, and as expected, the Tleilaxo -like revivals, you pay to the Tleilaxo. -like force revival, you may increase the three force revival limit for any other faction to five. Hmm. This is not the Alliance. Is it the Alliance? Not the Alliance is that. You may revive your life forces and leaders at half price. There's a discount for the Alliance. But for the Force Revival, you may increase the 3 Force Revival limit for any other faction to 5. Also, for each faction using Free Revival or Gola card, you take one Spice from the Spice Bank. Okay, so you control the Revival rate. Hey, you, you can revive 5. No, you can only revive maximum 3. Wow, that, that could be impactful. Leader Revival. Upon request by a faction for a particular one of its leaders in the tanks, you can set a price and, if met, revive that leader, whether it is face up or face down. <laughs> you may do this, however, only when fewer than five of the other faction leaders are in the tanks. When all five are there, normal revival rules apply. Mm -hmm, yeah, so if there are the five are dead, you need to revive all of them. Um, first Zool your leader Zool oh that's the guy that had the axe this one this one here what's happening with Zool your leader Zool value in battle matches the value of the opponent leader <laughs> so we have a mimic here the doppelganger and for collecting spice for his death okay so that basically nullifies the other leader in terms of math in terms of math but if it's get if it gets killed, so if you're mimicking a strong guy, you are and he gets killed, you are giving lots of spice to the other players. Then on the advanced game advantage, you have the golas. When you have fewer than five leaders alive, you may revive dead leaders from other factions at your discounted rate and add them to your leader pool up to a limit of five total active leaders for your faction. Yeah, so I can use the other leader, the Golas, the clones for the other leaders. Wow, this game is becoming fairly complex now, and we still have two expansions to go. So we, you really need you really need to train a little bit and that and and study the rules, the factions, because every time you play the game, there will be lots of new factions changing how the game is run. So I love I love it I love it. It makes so complex, so deep, that... By the way, they announced the Quizak Agderact version. It's a big box. I expect a big box with all this content, as well as some new things. Um, I'm not that I'm really interested in buying that, but um, because I already have the content. Uh, but anyway, let's see what the Quizak Agderact version brings. Okay. What, what are the cards that they bring here so treachery cards the traitors for the factions as expected the predictions for the bandages read some spice and some alliance so these are, will be the alliance cards if you ally with the Talaxo and Ixians I'm not going to get into details because that's explained then on this for the spice deck there is a new card here the sand trout cancel all current how oh, cancel all current alliances Set this card aside and draw a replacement card. The next time Shadow Loot card is drawn, it is discarded without effect, and a new Spice card is drawn, doubling any Spice Blow. Why do you cancel the current alliances? I don't know. 
you cancel it just cancel that's what the card does right and then if the alliances wants to get together again they need to wait for the next ne the next nexus i'm just gonna look here for a reference to the cards to see if these cards could go directly into the deck or i don't think they are related with the this faction so then the prediction cards so if if the Ben Jesuit want to predict that the Laxo or the Ixian would win, they need to use these cards. Then the traitors for these new factions, all the traitors also. Mm -hmm. And finally, we have the new treachery cards. Let's take a look at them and see what, what, what else is new here. So they need to include more weapons because if you start putting extra cards on the deck, it just will get diluted, the weapon. So. There's a special strike here. Play as part of your battle plan. So it needs to happen during a battle. Kill both leaders. Wow. Both players may use shields to protect their leader again. Okay, so if you have a shield, at least yours is saved. Surviving leaders do not count towards the battle total. The side that dialed high, higher wins the battle. <sighs> So, so, so I don't, I don't know how, where to use this. You need to have a shield, but then your leader doesn't count. That means that you should use this when you are facing, facing a big leader, big leader. So you can use a crappy leader. You kill the other leader. You get protected, and and that's it. That's it. Then there's another poison poison weapon but it says special here battle plan kill both leaders and oh it's not stopped by a snooper okay so it's a special poison it's the poison tooth the poison tooth it's not stopped by snooper let's see if we have a snooper here mm, no there's a shield snooper okay so these cards are now Becoming more complex. And what about this one? The Weirding Way. Play as part of your battle plan. Count as a projectile weapon unless played with another weapon. Played with another weapon. You can play two weapons. In that case, it counts as a projectile defense. Ah, okay. Good. <laughs> so this is like a martial art. It can be attack or defend. Counts as a projectile. You may keep this card if you win this battle. You may keep this card if you win this battle. So if you win the battle, you always keep your cards, right? So maybe it's a weapon and it's a defense. So very strange. Chemistry. A weapon, special player. Count as a poison defense. Unless played with another defense. In that case, it will become a weapon. Okay. Poison blade. A poison blade counts as projectile and poison. Counts as both. Okay. I'm just thinking about the voice. So if the voice forces you not to use um, a weapon, a poison weapon, could I still use it? I need to read the rules. Could I still use it as a, if I cannot use it as a poison weapon, could I still use it as a projectile weapon? I need to check that on the fuck. No, no questions. Same thing here. Counts both as a, a shield and a snooper. Counts... Uh, What's this? A weapon, projectile weapon, kills the opponent's leader before battle. Before the battle. Oh. Before the battle. How does that happen before the battle? So, the leader. Leader. Yeah, before the battle. Everything is before the battle, so I'm just being stupid here. No, this is different. This weapon counts as both as, uh huh, doesn't say before the weapon. But, mm -hmm. Okay, I need to study for these weapons here. Before the battle is resolved, everything says before the battle, so these, these don't say before the battle for some reason. This weapon counts as both as projectile and poison. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So. Maybe the tax is similar to the base game. I just need to check that. And I'm looking very silly here with this card. 
The cool, what? A worthless card. It's a worthless. Then the harvester. Just play just after the spice blow comes up. Double the spice blow. Please. Double the amount of spice. Okay, if you're near, you just double it. The thumper at the beginning of the spice blow phase, instead of revealing the next spice blow, uh, causes a sandworm to appear. Play, play proceeds as to Shadow Lu has been revealed. So there's an access. That's an access. Instead of revealing the next blow card, play causes a sandworm. The sandworm will appear where? Where? Doesn't say. Causes a sandworm to appear. Maybe it, it's where? Where the previous card is, right? That must be it. I said, yeah. To appear where the, the previous card was. I don't think this, these cards are that clear. I'm having some difficulty in going through them. At the beginning of any phase, cause all players to discard half of the spice. Okay, there's the defense against projectile. And there's another defense against poison. I really need to read the guidelines for this because, um, yeah, these cards are not so easy to interpret. But maybe that's just me. Okay, that doesn't stop me from uh, playing the game. And I hope you have enjoyed this expansion, the Ixians and the Tleilaxu. As mentioned before, uh, it would be super cool if you if you like the video to express that on the like button, as well as considering subscribing because I'll be bringing the, the rest of the expansions. So you can either find them already in the channel or subscribe and wait for the next one. Especially if you like board games in general, I have a, 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 a playlist dedicated to just that. So I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye.